there, Derek here from Pacific Coast Auto taking a look at a 1990 Skyline GTR in silver. This one's got 169 287 kilometers on it and is an auction grade 3, which is a little bit interesting because auction grade 3 can either mean a car that's in fairly poor condition or it can mean a car that has had a slight accident. And so let's look over the condition of this one. I will say that we, we ended up buying this one for considerably less than I think that the vehicle is worth. And so I think that we got a really good deal on this car. And that being said, there are very few good deals in the Skyline GTR at the moment because so many people want them and there are so few good ones left that finding one for a good deal usually doesn't happen. Even just our company, we usually will have two or three bidders on uh, almost all of the Skyline GTRs. And so anyway, let's take a look at this one. RB26 DEWT engine. Aftermarket air filters there. Oil filter relocation kit with plumbing that goes into an aftermarket oil cooler in there. Got aftermarket horn. Timing belt change at 79305 in 2002. Coolant looks fine, oil looks fine. Aftermarket strut tower bar and aftermarket suspension. Looks like Tain brand because of the color. Engine runs really lovely. Now 169,000 kilometers is high for a Skyline GTR. But the way that this one runs feels like much lower kilometers. So very good on that. So let's take a look at the auction sheet. Close the hood here. And once again, like my other video today, I forgot the auction sheet list at home. And so we're going to do iPhone version of auction sheet looking. So a 1990 Skyline GTR, auction grade three with interior C. 169, 287 kilometers with a little hash there and that's uh, mentioning what it says down here. Purchased by user, which means dealer trade-in, HID fog light, uh, HID lights and fog lights. Uh, toll collection box, fog lights. Uh, the ones that are inside here. So apparently double HIDs. Okay, original floor mats, kind of a weird thing to write there. So in 2015, October, the mileage is 169, 176 kilometers. And then this car was at auction and they had the unknown mileage mark on it. So because of that, the mileage is unknown on this car, which is a little bit funny because at 169, 287 and an unknown mileage car, the, the general feel of this one is a, higher quality, lower mileage than even 169. And then, according to the auction sheet, we're meant to believe that there's a possibility it could be higher. The gauges have been changed over to a Nismo unit. Let me just show you that. The Nismo gauges are go up to 320 kilometers an hour. And a lot of people like that because the original one only goes up to 180. And 180 is definitely not fast enough for this car. So my kind of guess on this one is that the person took care of it really well and that's why it, it feels really a low mileage. But also the Nismo gauge was changed when it was a brand new car or shortly thereafter. Aftermarket exhaust, aftermarket oil cooler, aftermarket air cleaner, aftermarket turbo timer. Okay, aftermarket steering wheel wear and peeling. Actually, not bad at all. Audio has been removed, dashboard part comes up, as they all do. Aftermarket driver's seat, which is in fact an R33 GTR driver's seat, so cool on that one. Oil leak, oil leaks are usually mild. That one would probably be on valve cover. I didn't even notice it, I looked around for a bit. Left and right baffle has been dented. And pardon my sniffles there. The left and right baffle has been dented and that would be why this is a grade three. That means that this car was hit on the front, but not repaired because the hit wasn't big enough to have to do any repairs. And if you look at all of the seams, like along here, and with the door, they're very good. You wouldn't even notice that this was in an accident unless you spent a good couple of minutes searching for that. And even then, I don't know if everyone would be able to tell. 
wheel scratch, small scratches, small dents, shallow scratches. And the body here has W2, W2, front lip has been painted because the lip usually comes in gray and now it's silver. And in fact, the front bumper has been repainted. Um, you can slightly tell. Overall, the condition of the paint is good. I'm pretty happy with it. Hood has been replaced. Now when it says the hood has been replaced, that's not always the case. Sometimes the hood is uh, just removed and then put back on. But in this case, since we know that it has been hit at the front, most likely the hood has been replaced as well. Just because, you know, that's a, a common thing to have to replace when you hit something on the front. Okay, so let's take a look at the body. And yeah, really good. Pretty dark here today, so sorry about the dark video. It's just that, look at the sky. That's why it's dark. It's not like it's nighttime, but it kind of looks like it. Okay, aftermarket exhaust on this one. Really no dents at all on the body, and that's surprising considering the price that we got this for, which I've, I've mentioned to a lot of people, but there are enough people coming in as new subscribers to the channel to not hear this, but we don't mention the price that we sell the cars for because this is a customer's car, and we don't want to give away something that the customer doesn't necessarily want us to talk about. A lot of our customers do end up, you know, import cars for the purpose of reselling them, even if they're not actual dealers, and so, uh, we don't want to spill the beans for anybody. Okay, so mechanically it looks good, exterior-wise it looks good, interior-wise it looks good. And so, super win on this car. Door cards are good with a little bit of peeling on them, right here. And... Got a small bump in here. GTRs do this, GTSTs too. Here's your R33 seat, which is very similar to the standard seat, but you just have perforated section in the back to make sure that your sweaty back stays unsweaty. Steering wheel feels good. You won't be able to notice in the video because it just looks like a steering wheel to you, but it's actually quite a bit thicker than your regular steering wheel would be and smaller. And so it feels sporty and it feels great to grip onto. It's actually quite grippy. Here's the peeling section here. Like I said, not too bad at all. Extra gauges here for your water and your oil and your boost. 169 to 97 kilometers on it. Oil pressure looks good. You've got a whole bunch of stuff here. Look, HKS EVC, turbo timer, more EVC stuff, which is boost controller. This one here is a gritty box for programming your gauges. We got a small crack here and here, and the binnacle, and dashboard coming up. And anyone who subscribes knows that dashboards come up on Skyline GTRs. If you have one that's not, you're lucky. You can even sell the used ones for over a thousand, uh, uh, I don't know, eight hundred dollars or so, maybe a thousand dollars, depends. Cracking here. I don't think that it's been smoked in. Cigarette lighter has never been used, no ashes in the ashtray. Doesn't smell like anything in the car, but I am a little bit congested today and so look good. These look like not R32 floor mats. They look like R33. I don't know. We buy so few R33 GTRs. Number one, of course, is the R32. Number two is the R34s. And R33s we buy sometimes, but not very often. Which is too bad, because they're a really good deal, and they're an excellent car. Okay, so that's the interior of this one. And we've already shown you the exterior. I would do an exhaust rev on this one, but I've done that on so many of the GTRs that uh, it's nothing new that you haven't seen already. So we're going to end off the video right there. Hope you enjoyed this one. Another Skyline R32 GTR being sent to the USA. So thank you very much for watching and have a nice day.